In this video, helpful Cancun travel tips to make you a smarter traveler, as well as 10 things to avoid or things not to do and some helpful general info about Cancun. And then this video is going to flip to a live in which I will be answering the top frequently asked questions I've been getting here on YouTube, as well as in my Instagram DMs coming up. If you're new here, whoop, Hola, I'm Christine with Where in the World is CL, and I try to make the travel videos I wish I got to see before I traveled to a place, and I'm all about helping you to be a smarter traveler. This video is part of a larger series. Make sure you check the description for tons more helpful info. Let's dive in with don't, don't take a taxi at the airport. That's exactly what I'm talking about that doesn't feel good. I, I mean, I have all my, my transportation set up, but just for fun, I guess, I asked how much it would cost to get a taxi when I asked for the price, they were so sketchy about it. So sketchy, like trying to pull me to the side, trying to call me the taxi before telling me the price, being unclear, weird. I think you can see how unhappy I felt after that moment. And even though I had my transportation set up, I did this just for you guys, just to see like, what is the going price? And everything you'll read online is exactly as you expected it to be, which is <laughs> you'll get a pretty terrible price at the airport if you get a taxi on the spot. And so I recommend you set up your transportation in advance. I've added some helpful links below on shuttles that you can take that are really phenomenal prices. Um, unless you are a phenomenal Spanish speaker who's good at negotiating, consider not getting your taxi at the airport. Because another helpful tip is when you get into the airport and you get through the arrivals hall, it's busy. You're getting bombarded by tons of people and it's kind of a stressful moment and that's not how you want to start your vacation. And you can see that everyone is out here and all the people who are getting picked up are uh, basically meet up at this spot. My next helpful tip to avoid is don't exchange your money at the airport. While you do have that option, you're not going to get the best rate and there are ATMs everywhere everywhere in Cancun. And not only that, here's another helpful tip. You can pay with US dollars in lots of the establishments, but you may not want to do that because you won't get as good of a rate versus paying in pesos. So consider getting money out of the ATM and paying in pesos, or here's the next helpful tip, don't forget to bring your credit card because in Cancun, more so than a place like Tulum where I've traveled to a lot, you can pay with your credit card a lot and everywhere in Cancun, it's very, very easy. And speaking of paying, don't forget to check your receipt when you're paying at restaurants. It's not the case everywhere, but in Cancun, more so than other places I've traveled, Tulum, Playa, Holbosch, etc., you will get sometimes the tip added to your bill. And just make sure you know that it's there. I didn't expect to see it. Sometimes I saw it and that's totally fine. So just make sure you're looking for that. And if it's not on there, tip accordingly. Another helpful tip while you're at that restaurant, drinking the ice is something I personally felt very comfortable with and something I talk about in my Cancun nightlife video. The ice is filtered at the restaurants, etc. I'm not saying, you know, 100% guarantee you're not going to get sick, but I felt perfectly fine drinking the ice in Cancun. But make sure, don't drink the water out of the sink when you're at your hotel. Make sure you're using bottled water just to be safe. I'd rather feel sick from drinking something else like too much alcohol. So don't drink the water. And by the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button and consider subscribing. All right, let's jump to the next one, which is don't go to Cancun when it's busy or it's raining unless you do it strategically. Ooh, what do I mean by that? That's how a lot of people feel about going to Cancun during spring break. So unless you're going to be a part of the spring break crowd, consider not traveling over a very busy time like spring break or during the very peak seasons like over New Year's or over Christmas, etc. It's helpful to know that December through April is when the best weather is happening in Cancun. But when I say don't go when the weather is bad, you can also do it strategically in that if you go during off season or even during shoulder season, you can find some really amazing deals in Cancun. And June through October is the rainy season with October being the rainiest month. I could see strategically staying at a really nice all-inclusive at a low peak season price and enjoying the indoors of the all-inclusive during a time frame like that, but still being able to pop out if the weather cleared up for a minute. So that's what I mean in terms of 
Don't go when it's busy. Don't go when the weather is bad unless you want to be a part of those crowds or unless you can strategically find some really great deals to go during that time. I love luxury for less. Ooh, which by the way, that leads me to my next helpful tip, which is if you want to know where I stayed, because tip, don't feel like you have to stay on the beach and don't feel like you have to stay at an all-inclusive in Cancun. I stayed at the Aloft Hotel at $84.88 and that includes tax and everything, which is a pretty phenomenal price and it was so centrally located. But make sure you check out the video in the description below for all my tips around where to stay as well as my picks on future hotel stays. This next tip, don't pay the asking price. For things like tours or things like buying souvenirs, I don't really buy anything. The price is negotiable. For things like a drink at one of the main nightclubs, not negotiable. But the first price is usually not the last price, especially those taxis at the airport. Which by the way, if you have other helpful tips, add them in the description below. We're all here as a community to help each other. Ooh, this next one I was kind of disappointed about. I thought you could drink on the streets in Cancun. I'm not saying I did it, but you can't drink on the streets of Cancun. It's technically illegal, no open containers. So don't drink on the streets of Cancun, even though lots of people might be. And don't just bring a bikini. You would think that, you know, beautiful, hot, tropical place, but actually it reminds me of being in places like where I'm at right now in South Florida, where you spend a lot of time in Cancun indoors, where it's heavily air conditioned. And so you're jumping between very hot and very cold. So make sure you bring a sweater. Mm. And sunscreen, obviously don't forget sunscreen. It can be very expensive at the resorts. I brought a lot of sunscreen on this trip, but there are markets around the area where you can find it at a regular price, but bring sunscreen. And if you have to buy it, don't get it at the resort. Make sure you go to a little local store. Helpful tip, the going rate for a taxi. And I ordered one through the hotel just so I can make sure because I got an early flight and I don't want to miss it, but 500 pesos to get to the airport. And it's about a 25 minute ride from where I am in the hotel zone on the north side. So helpful tip, $25 or 500 pesos is what you can expect. That's at least what I paid for a taxi. Now it's time to go. Bye Cancun. Okay, cheers that like button if you haven't already and I'm getting ready because this video is about to flip live in which, man, you guys asked me some hard questions, but I'm gonna do my very best to answer as many of them and as well and as helpful as possible. So let's flip to the live, but first let's show some fun scenes of Cancun, then let's go live. Where do we go? Let's go! I have seven questions lined up in which if you've got more, add them in the chat and I'll be doing tons more live streams like this. So make sure you stay tuned. All right. My first question comes from George Randall and George, oh, I'm going to do the hardest question first. George Randall asked me, is Cancun expensive? This is one of the hardest questions. If you have an answer, add it in the comments below. But it's a hard question for me to answer, George, because I lived in New York City for four years and San Francisco for over 10 years. And a couple months ago, I got gas for $1.99 in Florida and that felt like it was free. So I am speaking relative to those types of examples, but I wanna to try to be helpful here. The way I think about Cancun is kind of how I think about Vegas. And what I mean by that is in Cancun, you can, like Vegas, find phenomenal deals, like really phenomenal deals. And you can get very luxurious things that can be very, very expensive, but you can also get very luxurious things. YouTube video on my channel about how I stayed at the Wynn Hotel, five-star hotel for literally a, like a hundred bucks. It was insane. I got such a deal. And you can find similar deals like that in Cancun if you're looking at the right places and at the right time. Um, and you can also find things like Go City. If you don't know what Go City is, it's similar to City Pass in that it's taking all of the top attractions in an area, putting it together as a single pass, and then making all of those top attractions very inexpensive. A lot of popular places and cities have things like that. Link in the description below if you want to check that out. But you can find those things you want to do with like cool deals behind them. And so is it expensive? It can be. It can be if you go stay at some of the really nice five-star resorts. I talk about some of them in my hotels video on Cancun. It can range from, you know, $600 to $1,000 a night. 
I paid $84.88 for the Aloft Hotel, and I felt pretty good about that. Uh, and that includes an open bar, and that includes all the taxes and fees. Really great steal. When I compare it to places, a lot of people have watched my videos on Tulum, for example. When I compare Cancun to Tulum, is it expensive? People ask me that a lot as well. It depends. Uh, for, for Tulum, when you stay in Tulum town, oh, you can get amazing deals. I got a really great Airbnb for $36. When you stay on Can when you stay on Tulum Beach, it is very difficult to find good deals. It doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's just a place where it's not as easy to find great steals and deals like Cancun. Plus, Cancun's very built up, a uh, whole other story. Okay, next question. Leslie Ann. Leslie Ann says I was wondering about transportation. We're staying north of Cancun and planning on going to Tulum as well. Is transportation easy? I need more info on this, please. And if you have tips, add them below. Um, I'll say three different tips for you, Leslie. The first one, check ADO bus. ADO bus is so inexpensive. I used it to get from Cancun airport down to Tulum. You can use it within all the different cities within Mexico. And it's so, so cheap. We're talking, you know, anywhere from seven, under $20, around 15, 10 to $15 for a bus ticket. But you're going to specific bus stations. It's not like, oh, it's the bus that stops a lot along different ways. It's a large bus going to bus stations. So if the destinations that you're going to are right next to a ADO bus, for example, one of the hotels I was considering staying at in Tulum is La Tulumenia, which is right across the street from the ADO bus. And so it would be very easy for me to take the bus in that example. My second tip for you, Leslie, is a lot of the taxis, especially in Playa del Carmen and Cancun, have posted prices where there is a piece of paper that states this is the going rate for a taxi from here to there. If there is one of those, not every single person will share it with you. <laughs> hey in the chat, um, the, not every one person will share it with you, but if they do, you know, you're gonna ask for the posted prices, talk with the taxi and also just, you know, check and see prior to the moment in which you need that transportation, what's the going rate? I like to just ask just for, like I did earlier in this video, I like to just ask to see what someone might say and then lastly, ask the hotel, because even though you might pay a premium through the hotel, you can have it scheduled, which for my 7.45 a.m. flight, I wanted it scheduled. I didn't want to have to go be hungover, walking outside, looking for a coffee and a taxi at the same time. And so go through your hotel and ask what the rates are. So ADO bus, talk to different taxis and also talk to your hotel. Okay, Yolanda. Yolanda asks, are the beaches nice in Cancun? Oh, that water, that water. Oh, it looks so good. If you looked at some of my drone shots, I that is what it looks like. It, it's really, really beautiful. I love Mexico because the water is beautiful. And in Cancun, the beaches are very, very beautiful. But I have a few tips for you, Yolanda. The first one is that, okay, yes, I get it. Everyone in the comments of my Tulum videos are like, Christine, the beaches are all free. You can go on the beach. But it doesn't mean the restaurants and the hotels are gonna make you feel that way. In other words, here, there is beach property after beach property set up all along the beach. And so it's not easy to just, you know, go lay out on the beach somewhere without the hotel being like, please move off of our property. And again, by law, Mexico beaches are free. They're not gonna make you feel that way. They did not make me feel that way when I was walking around Cancun. I share that in one of my videos on my channel. But the other thing is if you wanna enjoy the beach, every single local, I love talking to locals. What's like, cual es su favorito playa? That's how bad my Spanish is, but you, it's basically what's your favorite beach. And everyone says Playa del Finis, and that's where you can see the big Cancun sign. Um, obviously it will be very busy. There will be lots of locals there, but uh, Playa del Finis is a place to go to. Or the alternative way of enjoying the beach is just to stay at one of those all-inclusives on the beach, which is the way I plan on doing Cancun on my next trip, which might be coming up hot and soon. And so uh, those are my tips for you, Yolanda. Okay. Cindy. Cindy says, oh, Cindy, this is a really hard question. How much money should I bring? Okay. 
This is different for everybody, which is why it's very difficult for me to answer this question, but it, that's not a helpful answer. So this is the way I think about Cancun. Cancun is a place where it is very, very easy to pay with your credit card. In Tulum, I felt challenged paying with a credit card because when you're on the beach, when they're trying to swipe your card, they often don't have Wi-Fi, and so you can't pay with a card. A lot of places don't accept credit cards. A lot of places do, but not every place. In Cancun, it felt very easy to pay with a credit card. So I would say for me personally, I paid for about 80 to 85% of all of my Cancun expenses with a credit card. Here's an example of when I didn't my Ila Mujeres video. I expected to roll into the express ferry and be able to pay with my credit card. And I was surprised. They did not accept credit card there. Maybe it was just that day. I'll put that out there. But I was like, okay, $26 ferry, but I was spotting my friends. So now all of a sudden I'm you know, paying $75 US in pesos, which is a good chunk of pesos. Um, but again, there are ATMs everywhere in Cancun, I was able to pay with my credit card a lot, 80 to 85% of the time. And so I actually did not bring that much cash. Um, I always make sure I bring um, a stack of US dollar ones for gratuity because sometimes, you know, you'll have a lot of those small pesos, but sometimes you don't. And everyone is always willing to accept gratuity, no matter in what currency, that's just my opinion. So I always make sure I have those in my back pocket, not literally in my back pocket, it's in my fanny pack, close. So uh, how much money to bring? Here's one other way I think about it. I try really hard to just look at my itinerary if I happen to have one. I'm usually flying by the seat of my pants. And I look at what kinds of items are on there. How many of my tours have I paid for in advance? Okay, if I have paid for it in advance, great with a credit card. But how much gratuity will I need for that? That helps me to figure out the cash. What kinds of places will I be eating at? Will it be street food or will it be nice dining restaurants? Credit card. If street food, okay, how much cash might I need? And I'm just doing a mental checklist day by day of my trip of being like, okay, I probably need around X amount of dollars per day. That number, for example, Tulum Beach, I was probably spending several hundred dollars in cash per day on Tulum Beach. In Cancun, the only time I took my wallet out for paying in pesos was gratuity here and there and small things like the ferry that were unexpected times that I couldn't pay with my credit card. Cindy, I hope that helps you. I tried my best. Add your tips in the comments below. Rebecca. <laughs> uh, Rebecca's question is funny. Christine, you ride, you ride bikes everywhere. You rode bikes in Tulum. I did. It's like such a fun way to get around. You rode bikes in Ethiopia. I did. I camped in Ethiopia earlier this year. Videos on that in the description below. Should I ride a bike around Cancun? This is a great question. This is a great question, Rebecca. Also because a lot of the hotels will provide bikes, even at the Aloft Hotel. With my $84.88, not only did it come with 12 hour open bar, but it came with bikes, free bike rentals. Oh, one of my favorite channels is in the chat, hey guys. Um, so Rebecca, I was totally planning on riding a bike in Cancun, but I didn't. And I didn't for a couple reasons, and these might help you out as you're thinking about it for yourself. The first one is it's insanely busy. It's really, really busy in Cancun in terms of the streets are not quaint, quiet beach streets. They're not freeways, but they are busy roads, large multi roads in which riding a bike on there when these cars are zooming past really, really fast and I used to race a road bike in San Francisco, it's just not enjoyable to be in a situation like that, trying to ride your bike along the beach in Cancun. So for that reason, I would not. And the other reason is because taxis, taxis in Cancun, I wish it was the same situation in Tulum. Taxis in Cancun are set rates, it's a couple dollars per person to go along the entire hotel strip. And if you didn't see my um, Cancun hotels video, the Cancun hotel zone is eight miles long and without traffic, around 15 miles to get all the way from the north to the south. And at just a couple dollars per person to ride in a taxi and taxis being everywhere, I would take the taxi if you wanna get your exercise, go work out somewhere else. So for me, no on the bike, that's my tips around riding bikes out there. If you have more, add them in the comments. Okay, Thomas asks, 
what's around Cancun? Um, that's a great question, Thomas, because in my opinion, Cancun is really great for all inclusives, but it's also a, great for nightlife, but it's also really great. Terry's in the house. It's also really great, Thomas, um, as a jumping off point. Cancun is right next to the airport. We're talking, depending on whether you're south, 15 minutes from the airport or in the North Hotel Zone, 25 minutes to the airport. It is a place to go see a lot of places. Come into Cancun on that cheap flight, not always, but you can get really good deals, and jump off to, here are some of my favorite destinations. Thomas, I love Tulum. Everyone knows that. Depending on traffic, it's around two and a half hours to get from Cancun to Tulum. ADO bus, great option. Playa del Carmen. Playa, more similar to Cancun, but not, you can find a lot more like fun local restaurants and cool local experiences. I love Playa del Carmen. That's about an hour and a half drive. Again, without traffic, another great option, ADO bus. And sorry, I'm talking about ADO bus a lot. Helpful tip, ADO bus from Cancun airport has set destinations and times on the Cancun airport website, trusted website to go take you to Cancun Central downtown to Tulum to Playa del Carmen. So make sure you're checking that out. The other thing is Holbox Island. I was mispronouncing it forever as Holbox Island. It sounds that way, um, but Holbox Island, which is phenomenal and tons of videos coming out on that soon. Holbox Island is amazing. And the way someone I was recently hanging out with, Mr. Scott Eddy, describes it is there's not a lot of tourism there because it's not easy to get to. And so it deters a lot of people. So an experience like I had where you're like, I have this whole island to myself is an amazing because it's a two and a half hour drive to get from Cancun to Chiquila. And then it's another 30 minute ferry to get over to the island. There's no cars on the island. And then you have to take a golf cart or walk like I did to wherever your hotel is, which is generally anywhere from another 10 to 15 minutes. So Thomas, to answer your question, what's around Cancun? And I'm just naming a couple of my favorites nearby. I love going to Tulum. I love going to Playa. I love going to Holbox Island. Um, I want to answer a quick question that came up in the chat, and I'm so glad so many of you are here with me. Spode Spaldeus, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing that. I'm going to Tulum Friday. Should I spend time in Playa del Carmen or Cosmo or just stay in Tulum? The way I would answer this question is it depends on what kind of experience you're looking for. So in Tulum, it's there's so much to do. I spent almost a month there and didn't even cross off half of the things I wanted to do in Tulum. And I wasn't just hanging out in the hotel all day. I was out there adventuring every single day. There's so much to do in Tulum. I would say if you want to spend time in Playa, which I did as well, Playa is really great if you want to have less of that jungly rustic vibe and get back to something closer to luxury for less, a place that's built on a grid, you know, more large format hotels. Um, and the other thing about Playa del Carmen is it's so close to Cozumel. You can take the ferry over to Cozumel, which is a beautiful island. I cannot wait to get there and scuba dive with a large grouper. For me, I tried every single day to get to Cozumel. But when I was in Playa and I, was, I stayed in Playa for, I extended it to, I think, 11 nights total. I was never able to go to Cosmo because the waves were so big that the ferry never made it over. Um, but I highly recommend Cosmo. And if you do it, I personally would recommend doing it not as a day trip, but as at least a one night. People always say like, how much time should I spend there? Spend as much time as you can. Uh, I would personally probably spend two to three nights there, primarily diving on the island um, and exploring the island. I love islands. You guys know that. If you look at my Instagram, I basically just chase beaches around the world. Um, but if you need some tips around understanding the Cancun area overall, I kind of spell that out with a map screen share in my aloft uh, in my hotels video. So I'll add a link in the description below for you. Okay. Um, unnamed person asks, will you pay for me to travel with you? It is so funny. I get this question a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Will I pay for you to travel with me? Uh, maybe one day. Um, I want to share a dream and I want to share something kind of behind the scenes, especially if you made it this far in this video. Um, one is one of my dreams is there are people 
and I, you know who you are, who have been watching my YouTube channel since I started. And it is my dream to pay for you to travel with me. And so that is one of the things that is on my radar as a life dream. Um, because the reason why I make this channel, which going back to the behind the scenes, I posted transparently on Instagram, I'll link it below, how much money I make on YouTube. And it barely, barely covers my champagne bill per month. I don't make anything making these videos. I make these videos because traveling makes me feel so alive and I feel successful when other people take the trip. When you take the trip, it's all worth it for me to spend the time making these videos when you guys take the trip. Okay, uh, one last question. And I know I'm not getting to all of them. Thank you so much for spending your time here with me today. Um, my last question that I'll answer here. Oh, what's next? What's next for me? Where am I headed next? Actually, with the world opening back up, I have been chasing beaches for a very long time. Cancun and Tulum are on my radar for actually in a couple of months, I'll be back, which I'm super excited to shoot videos about. But I am headed back to the city. Now that more people are traveling, cities are opening up. I'm going back to the places that I love. I spent a lot of years living in New York City and I will be headed back to New York for a month. So I will be there and you will see a ton of live streams of me out there. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see y'all in the next adventure. Ciao.